In the early 19th century, the foundation of the Poprazova steelworks was prompted by the necessity to meet the demand of rail production in the Hungarian Empire. High volume construction presented a major challenge to the Chamberlain's office in Banska Stavnica, which managed Hungarian iron production. Anton Glenza, a representative of the management of the mill in Kronjets, drew up the proposal for the location of the new plant. The location in the Hron Valley below Brezovar Hill met the required conditions. The River Hron had a sufficient volume of water sourced from the catchment valleys which enabled its use for energy and to provide a route for the consistent supply of timber by rafting it from the surrounding forests. The proposal for the construction was approved in 1839 by Prince Augustus Lubkowitz, the president of the Minton Mining Court Chamber in Vienna. Construction began in 1840 and once it went into operation, rail production continued uninterrupted until 1884 when the steelworks shifted its focus towards structural and construction products. But whatever the plant produced, it would forever hold the title of the Hungarian Empire's first ever rail producer. Zelazana Poprazova already supports the sixth generation of residents of the remote area of Hore Hronia. For more than 180 years they have always been a decisive link, affecting the standard of living in the entire region. Although years of success alternated with years of doom and gloom, the factory was lucky to have the right people in management. Their ability, skill and courage to make the right decisions have brought it to the forefront of global seamless steel tube production. The 1960s brought a new direction in the development of the company. In 1961, a vertical two-stream device for the continuous casting of steel was put into operation in Poprazova, placing it in seventh position globally. The steelworks became a pioneer of this technology in Czechoslovakia. The gradual modernization was a long and winding road. Competent authorities postponed the complex development of the new steel plants indefinitely. In 1963, Anton Kolenichka took up the post of the company director and together with the management, which also included Julius Stark and Bohomil Samek, they had no qualms about protesting against poor decisions. In order to fully justify the concept, an increase in the supply of tubes to the Ukraine and other countries of the former Soviet Union played its part. The Federal Ministry of Metallurgy and Heavy Engineering decided on the implementation of the so-called T-program in Poprazova. At the same time, it prompted the need to resolve the production issues of seamless and drawn tubes comprehensively, from steel production to final end product. A prospect study from 1972 dealt with the production of seamless and precision tubes and the introduction of structural steel into the production program. As export requirements increased to 170,000 tonnes of seamless and 80,000 tonnes of precision tubes in 1973, a new concept forecast to be operational by 1990 was necessary. This included the construction of an electric arc furnace and the equipment needed for continuous steel casting. The objectives of the development of the tube programme, which were characterised by high production efficiency and evaluation of raw materials and energy, were gradually realised. On the 12th of April 1972, tube drawing mill number no. 1 was put into operation, which commenced production of precision tubes with diameters ranging from 4 to 30 millimeters. It was a comprehensive assortment, but it was in high demand. The traction devices had modern thyristor power regulators and the process of bundle selection was handled on the line by an automated overhead conveyor system which was designed and produced in Europe. This significantly reduced the amount of manual work. In 1979 a seamless tube drawing mill was constructed with an annual capacity of 170,000 tonnes. In 1980 tube drawing mill number no. 2 became operational and it became one of the largest plants in Europe with a production capacity of 65,000 tonnes of tubes per year. 
The range was primarily intended for export to the Soviet Union. A significant shift in steel production came in 1982 with the construction of a modern four-string facility for continuous steel casting. Outdated steel production techniques and the need for more modern equipment for continuous steel casting were causing considerable problems, which intensified the urgency to address the production output. The goal was to build a closed loop production cycle. Preparations for the construction of an electric arc furnace began in 1986. Anton Stuhlreicher took over as the company director. Under his leadership, the steelworks initiated negotiations at the highest level regarding the necessity to build an electric steel plant with a single powerful smelting unit. The company Hutni Projekt of Prague developed the project, in which one of the conditions for inclusion in the investment plan was a strictly limited budget. However, they had already exceeded the sum of 500 million Czechoslovak crowns within their proposal. Due to this fact, it was decided that the subsidiary establishments of the steel mills would be dealt with separately and that the steel mills would finance them from their own resources. During the commotion of preparations in the construction of the new electric steel plant, the Velvet Revolution of 1989 occurred, which brought about a major transformation in ownership and management. Despite an uncertain future, the foundation stone for the 60-ton electric arc furnace was laid in 1990. This historical turning point demanded the making of good decisions as the future of the factory was uncertain. The entry of the Popazova Steelworks into the first wave of the share-based privatisation was a necessary step in order to save the company. The management made this decision despite the fact that after 1989 the metallurgical industry was in a poor situation, with a tendency to lean towards a gradual liquidation. On the 1st of May 1992 the joint stock company Zelazhana Popazova was founded. Its start was very difficult and the eastern and homeland markets were falling apart. A new philosophy of directing trade towards the West was adopted. A strategic step was the founding of the international trading company Pipex International on the 7th of October 1993 in Biela, Switzerland. The year 1993 is considered to have been the most difficult in the history of the company. The recession affected the production of steel tubes and anti-dumping measures made it difficult to sell the products on the European market. The consequences of the depression in the engineering industry were reflected by the insufficient demand for metallurgical products. Their prices stagnated and, to make matters worse, the cost of input materials increased. Despite the unfavourable circumstances, the management of the joint stock company continued with the adopted strategy. Financing the completion of the electric steel plant was problematic. However, thanks to the enormous efforts of the management, the company obtained a loan of 800 million crowns with the assurance of a state guarantor. And so, the most important investment project which ended the 20-year effort of building a closed-loop production cycle and represented an investment of 1.3 billion crowns resulted in the increased throughput of the steel mill. By building a new high-performance ecological electric arc furnace and putting it into operation in February 1993, the plant became self-sufficient and Poprazova became a major smelter. The completion of its modernization came with the construction of a three-stream system for third-generation continuous casting, which in 2013 eventually completely replaced the original one, which had been in operation for three decades. Simultaneously, with the first smelting in the new continuous casting process, the new dust suppression system of the electric arc furnace and the ladle furnace were put into operation. The furnace came to life at a time when many factories were fighting for their existence. The situation in the plant in Poprazova was also very difficult. The decrease in operating capital from the loss-making company was constant and was joined by the inappropriate licensing policy of the Slovak Republic government which enabled the export of metal waste. 
The company found itself in the red recording a loss of 500 million crowns in 1993 and 1994. In the historical ups and downs of the steelworks, the crucial turning point occurred yet again. Either the factory falls or it rises and moves on. Many other businesses went bankrupt and even the rescue of Poplarzova required the determination and strength to face negative influences. An extraordinary general meeting was convened in which a new management board was formed. In 1994, Vladimir Sotak became the chairman of the board and the general director of Zelizhana Poprazova. Deputy chairman of the board and director of capital development, Ludovic Ehring. The production director is Vladimir Svarik. The HR director is Marianne Zima. The technical director is Josef Marchok. Economic director is Marianne Kuricic and the commercial director is Julius Krivan. The ambition of the newly elected board was to save the company while achieving its long-term prosperity. Since August 1994, a group of specialists from the Swiss company JP Calms Consultants has been working with the company. The conclusion of the in-depth analysis confirmed that the joint stock company had the potential to become a profitable metallurgical enterprise but it had to meet the conditions of restructuring. The first revitalization program in Slovakia was developed in Poprezova. Thanks to this, the board managed to obtain a loan of 300 million crowns from Slovenska Spodytelna and in 1995, the company made a profit. The majority owner of the joint stock company, Zelizhana Poprezova, became the company CPA under the leadership of Jan Banas, consisting of seven co-owners, all with equal share ownership of the company. Over the course of several years, the revitalized company issued bonds, which resulted in the acquisition of 800 million crowns for further development. The board of directors approved a new strategy based on the diversification of business activity. In addition to the production of seamless steel tubes in the parent company, they began to focus on production in the field of heavy engineering, metallurgy and tourism. By purchasing the companies DAS and TS Pilsen, Jelizhana Poprazova gained control over the production of forging presses ranging from 100 to 30,000 tonnes. No company in the world could boast such a cast production range. The companies mentioned were on the verge of collapse at the time of their takeover, but thanks to the correct management philosophy, Zelizhana Poprazova integrated them into a showcase of Czech industry. ZP Group includes the Spanish companies Transmesa and TAP, with the production of precision tubes, cold drawn tubes and tubes made from carbon and low alloy steel. The CEO is Johan Ramon Domanek. These rank among the top companies in the world due to their production technology. The basis of the production of the joint stock company, Jaromat Kalinovo, whose general director is Peter Balaj, is refractory materials, with the main production being fire clay, refractory concrete, as well as other materials. ZP Echo Quellet, headed by CEO Roman Veverka, is the majority supplier of steel scrap to the parent company and KBZ, located in Košice, also supplies input materials to Poprazova. Its managers are Andrei Orolin, Otto Ivan and Anton Mucha. In 2019, the company Zelizhana Poprazova took over ownership of the Hungarian company Tom Fair, a manufacturer of welded tubes and components which are produced for the automotive industry. The most important business and distribution channel for the sale of steel tubes on the global markets is Pipex Italia, whose general director is Luigi Cusolin. The company Slovra, whose general director is Andrzej Romerowicz, is focused on the sale and distribution of products on the Polish market. In the Czech Republic, the company ZP Trade Bohemia, with its seat in Prague, provides business services. Its general director is Martin Czermark. Pipex Deutschland is located in Germany, whose CEO is Silvio Rossi. 
Part of the parent company's production is also sold by the Spanish company Transmesa. A significant part of the company's production is sold directly from Poprazova to the commercial markets of Central and Eastern Europe. Zelizhana Poprazova realizes less than 5% of its total sales on the domestic market. Product logistics are provided by Zanononi Slovakia which delivers truck shipments to countries within the European Union, arranges rail and container deliveries, and cooperates with overseas logistics partners. Its general director is Anna Kovacová. With the intention of incorporating highly sophisticated production and technological procedures, the ZP Research and Development Centre was established in cooperation with Professor Ludovic Parilak. Since its beginning in 2008, the subsidiary company has recorded significant achievements in the field of research and development. The centre also works closely with leading research institutions and universities within the European Union. One of the strongest partnerships is with the Technical University of Materials, Metallurgy and Recycling in Košice, which is headed by Iveta Vashkova. The CEO of the company is Pavel Beraksa. The company ZP Informatica, whose general director is Jan Gabon, monitors and maintains IT and technical systems for Zelizhana Poprazova and its subsidiaries. Another pillar of the business is the tourism industry. The recreational multiplex of the joint stock company, Tale, commenced construction of a golf and ski resort in 1998. It has become a favourite destination for winter sports fans and with the opening in 2002 of the first championship golf course, Great Bear, Tarly has become a sought after all year round tourist centre. The golf course has hosted several of Europe's most prestigious professional golf tournaments and hosts other major events. The nine hole Little Bear course was introduced more recently. The general director of the company is Josef Sotak. Today, Zelizhana Poprezova is among the European and global leaders in the production of steel tubes. A prerequisite for its success consists of a professional work team made up of dedicated and highly qualified employees. The steelworks are among the pioneers in the development of apprenticeship education. They have been focused on the organised professional growth of younger generations for 86 years. The system of training the younger generation was disrupted during the 1990s when the state-run education lost its ability to respond to the needs of production and the labour market. As soon as legislation allowed it, the steelworks purchased the schools which they had been building for many years prior to them being confiscated by the state in 1968. They established a private metallurgical vocational school and later a private college. Today the school provides students with comprehensive material support, modern specialist classrooms and laboratories. In each grade, students wear school uniforms, they receive laptops and protective work equipment. Education is free and students receive rewards for productive work. As one of the few schools in Slovakia, the Occupational Training School has practiced a dual education system since its inception, while the curriculum and focus of the education are oriented to the needs of the founder. The above standard social program has its own tradition at Zelizhana Poprazova, and not only in the field of improving qualifications with the possibility of a work-study program together with a dignified working environment. Healthy meals are provided by the subsidiary company ZP Gastro Service, whose director is Jana Kohutova. Healthcare is provided through the subsidiary company ZP Rehabilitatia, whose managing director is Maria Niklova. A novelty in recent years is rental apartments, which are increasing in popularity. In the social sphere, the company has the ZP Foundation and the Mishko Sotak Foundation, which not only help employees if they find themselves in need, but also support gifted children in the region. 
The pride of the steelworks is the brass band, the history of which is two years older than the factory itself. The company also pays attention to sports. Out of the 18 clubs, the most important ones have emerged, and today, in addition to the elite players, the steelworks support children and youths, especially in football and bowling. In the football club, there are around 300 registered players in 12 different age categories. In Poprezova, they are proud of their history and they protect their cultural heritage. Valuable ancient monuments are cared for by the ZP Metallurgical Museum. The company newspaper Poprezovan was first published in 1930 as the first legal workers newspaper in Slovakia. Despite the fact their publication was temporarily stopped in its early years, it has been published continuously since 1945. Through the newspaper, the company maintains contact with its former employees. The management of the company also saved Horikronia's jewel, Lubcha Castle, which has been under meticulous reconstruction for the past 20 years. The generations of today look back and respect the work that their predecessors had to carry out under very harsh conditions and yet were able to maintain high standards. Today we can talk with even greater pride about the current successes of the company, which has been led by Vladimir Sotak Sr. for the past 29 years and as the Chairman of the Board and CEO of Zelozhana Poplazova. Vice Chairman of the Board and Economic Director is Marianne Kuricic. Member of the Board and Commercial Director is Vladimir Sotak Jr. Member of the Board and Production Director is Milos Dekret. Member of the Board and Technical Director is Martin Domovets. Member of the Board and HR Director is Jan Vilim. The Chairman of the Supervisory Board is Jan Banas. 183 years have passed since workers' boots first hit the hard ground in the picturesque valley of the Hron River. Right from its earliest roots, the mere idea to construct a factory as part of a complex when, in the 19th century, the largest and most technically advanced manufacturer in the Hungarian Empire was conceived, the Poprazova steelworks were destined for success. Today, as they progress into the 3rd century, they are among the oldest metallurgical companies in Central Europe. They constantly strive to improve the production process and constantly pay considerable attention to the current trends. An interesting fact is that 26% of the energy which is consumed by the factory is produced by the factory itself through five small hydroelectric plants, a steam gas plant and by solar energy. The Poprasova steelworks have always been one step ahead and thanks to them they have written and will continue to write the history of the industry of the European format. The mind, courage and firm hands of those who run the factory and the generations locked in metallurgy in coordination with the right decisions have been and will always be able to face the challenges of progress. Thanks to the right direction and management philosophy it is indisputable that Zelozhana Poprazova has a bright future. I had this film made as a tribute to all my past and present colleagues and in particular those of the past 50 years which I consider to be the most successful in the history of Zelozhana Poprezova. As you have seen we've come a long way. We're now highly competitive and rank among the world leaders in the production of hot drawn and cold roll tubes. I take this opportunity to thank not only my colleagues, but also my co-workers, suppliers, our banks 
And of course, a special thank you has to go to our customers who remain loyal to our company. I believe that what you have just seen has warmed the hearts of each and every one of you. Together with our associated companies, you have seen what a very interesting, highly reputable and strongly established group we have become. I wish Jelizjana Koprezova a long and prosperous future. Thank you very much.